Well, greetings and welcome, thanks. Bless you all for being here tonight on Straight Race Truth Radio Broadcast, the Brothers segment. I'm your host, Deacon Bell. For those of you that don't know me, hallelujah. I live here at Straightway, the hub. And that's where we're broadcasting from tonight. Hallelujah. We appreciate all you all, all of you saints with your time and your support for the ministry, support for the broadcast that, that, that go out, you know, from this this broadcast, the first day broadcast, the sister to sister, Pastor Dow's blog talk on sixth day, uh, Sabbath evening, um, and then uh, support the Lions Den and all the other um, content that the ministry puts out. You know, Teacher Eric does his videos and. Um, what Brother Michael Israel does some, um, you know, thanks. You all know what we all got going on, but hallelujah, you know. I'm glad, I hope you all stay abreast and keeping up with everything that's going on in the ministry. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. Hope everyone received the word yesterday, had a ready heart, a heart that was open to hear, and received the engrafted word with the man that y'all labored to give us yesterday. Put on the, put it on the platter, feeding the sheep. For those that are sheep, you know, some, some, you know, goats come along too. But of course, the man of Yah, his his main function, his his concern is going to be the sheep. So if you have a sheep spirit, and you can uh, receive the word, Hallelujah, be part of the fold, part of the flock. Praise Yah. But you know, I hope we don't hope no one got offended. That the word. A lot of times the word goes out, and as, a, and as it's written, hey, harden not your heart. And when you say that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Bless you, Brother Willie. And that's, a, that's something that goes on a lot, too. If we want to, you know, Pastor talked about uh, straining and resisting, you know, with exercising, and, uh, you know, using, that, using some of that analogy and example. You know, how, how, many, how many of us, we strain and resist the word. When the word comes, we tighten up, harden up. You know, we clench that spiritual heart, of that, that heart muscle. Don't want to let that word get in because it's cutting. <laughs> Hallelujah, Brother Vincent. <laughs> I love the law too much to be offended. Psalms 119, 165. Perfect peace has they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend. That's right. Hallelujah. Keep that heart, brother. And keep your love, keep yourselves in the love of the Most High Yah as well, saints. We should be striving for His love. You know, there's one thing we can say: we love our brothers. We can love Yah, but we don't love our brothers. You know, we got strife, contentions, hatreds, and variances, all kinds of things going on in us. You know, let, let's put that stuff to rest. Kill that old man. That old man needs to be crucified. We need to mortify the deeds of the flesh and the spirit. You know, we're operating out of a, a wicked spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, we, but let's go to um, Second Ezra. Chapter 1. Second Ezra. Second Ezra. Second Ezra. Chapter 4, verse 2. Scripture popped in my mind. Second Legends chapter four verse two. There's something to think on, saints. And of course, we all go back and read this in context. You know, see what Edges was had going on there. All right, he's talking to an angel Uriel in verse one. And the angel that was sent to me, whose name was Uriel, Uriel, gave me an answer and said, "Thy heart." Have gone too far in this world, and thinkest thou to comprehend the way of the Most High? You know, he said that to him. And I believe Ezra's a lot more righteous, a lot more holy, holy than we are today. You know, he had that conversation, and the angel told him his heart has gone too far in the world. Now, how many of our hearts have gone too far in the world, saints? Especially when we're not walking in the spirit. Giving place to the house of time. You 
Is that why we get out of character? Is that why we act a, act a, these certain ungodly ways that manifest themselves in our flesh? Let's, let's go to Galatians chapter. Wait a minute. Where's my, Galatians. Oh, let me go there. Chapter five. Galatians chapter five, verse sixteen. We'll start there, brother. Ugly. And I do thank the man of Yah for the opportunity. That he provides for us to be able to come and minister to you, you know, the back pastor has provided this law talk for, you know, for allow us brothers to to come and minister to you. And that is a always a blessing, and I thank the most high that he allows me to be here as well, you know, first and foremost, and then do his man servant fast. You know, we don't take it, I don't take it lightly. I'm sure that I know Elder Elder Rufus, Elder Becker, Teacher Shane, Teacher Eric. No, no, no one takes it lightly when they come before you, saying, whether this platform or any of the other ones. You know, I'm sure Brother Daniel and the brothers out there in straightway Goshen don't. The Lions Den, uh, Elder Mitchell don't when he comes here and ministers. It, it, even on the YouTube channels and things, brothers and sisters, you know, none of these things are taken lightly. The sisters don't take it lightly on sister to sister. You know, my beloved wife and, and Mother Jennifer, you know, they don't take it lightly either. So let's make sure we, you know, we're, we're, we're serious about this. Things that we um that the father the father has provided for us to uh, edify. You know, he gives us ministers to bring the work. Hallelujah. Anyway, all right, Galatians chapter five verse sixteen. We we'll start there. This I say then: walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. So you got two things working in, in us. You got the, either you're going to walk in the spirit or you're going to walk in the flesh. And they're contrary to one to the other. So you got two opposing kingdoms working. But Paul says this, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness. Reveling and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah. So that, that alone right there saying, should, should, should have us motivated to walk righteously before the Most High, you know, striving against sin. You know, now some, of, some of us I know are holier than thou. You know, you're so holy that, that some of us can't even look at you, can't even touch you. you know, can't can't look in your direction because you so you know you you you're the epitome of the righteousness of Yah. But if you manifest in any of this, you got something to work on. I know we got a lot of earthbound Enochs running around and running around in this ministry too. Some some of you. Some some of your self right your self righteousness stinks. To be told, you don't, you don't realize what filthy rag. And, 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 and folks outside the ministry too. So you know, you're not exempt either. You know, because some of you people call want to call in or or type in on the chats and things. And you know, do you wear cheap seats? Do you have? Do you do this? Do you do that? All this outward show of things. Or uh, if you got white flesh, you'll eat it, my. I mean, damn, really? What a fool. A lot of you are. A well, foolish with these things. You know, you won't listen to Teacher Shane or Teacher Eric because they got white flesh. You won't listen to Elder Becker because he has white flesh. No matter what the truth we speak, that they're speaking, but because of that foolishness. 
But you forget that flesh and blood is not going to inherit the kingdom of Yah. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Well, you know, you're the seed of Abraham. Trust me, I know, I know. We, you, you, you're the seed of Abraham. But, you know, let's not forget, you must be born again as well. You know, Pastor was preaching the message yesterday. And there's a lot of, a lot of souls that's hanging, hanging over the fire of hell that are in danger. Because they don't receive the message. You know, the gospel or the gospel. They don't receive the message. They don't know the true Yeshua, the true Jesus. Oh, the real Jesus. They don't know. They don't want to know. They don't want to come into the sheepfold. They don't want to come through the door. You got to come by him. You got to come by Jesus. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Don't say that name, Deacon. Come on. Don't use the name Jesus. You know, all this mess. But you, but, but you know what? Get past all that. Let's go back this way. If you walk past, if you live up to the flesh, you're gonna die. And all the stuff that that the fruit of the, the fruit of the flesh is manifest, and that's operating in you. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Always, there's plenty to work on. You know, uh, I think about the heritage coming behind. Us. You know, my seat. All the the children in this uh, on the community, the young children in the ministry. Even the young men, you know, everyone is coming up behind, younger than me. I mean, but especially the children. You know, we got the, the younger men who are righteous walk amongst us. We got our brother Brett, brother JC's, brother uh, Carlisle here behind me here in the sound room tonight, brother Joshua Westmoreland. They're, you know, the righteous young holy men that are come up, you know, the young men that are coming up. And, the, you know, the other young men, you know, the different age groups, thanks, but, you know, I was thinking, thinking about the young men, but the but the generation has come behind us. You know, you look at the, that heritage and the things that, you know, we, that we, the generations before them have, have dealt with as far as, you know, you look at the sins of our fathers, the iniquity. Now, there's a lot that we got to get out of the way. Those of us who truly love our children, like we've heard pastors and his preachers say, if you would love your children, you'd be getting right. You'd be working on yourself. Getting right, getting whole, getting holy, getting clean, getting you know dealing with the sins, the transgressions in your family line. Because I'm gonna tell you, these children, that they got, they gonna have to deal with sin, hell, and the devil too. Now they may not know it right now, and they got their, they're, they're striving to build their testimony in, in Christ, as they're building, build, building up, and growing in their faith, growing in the knowledge of Yah. They're gonna find out that there's things in them they gotta deal with. But you know, one thing they may come back, they'll thank you that you. Did some that the foundation was laid, for, uh, you know, by some of us in our, in, in our generation that we, that we started breaking the curses off the family line, that we started striving to be righteous, striving to be holy before the Most High, you know, reading reading Deuteronomy 28 and not looking at it from a natural standpoint but a spiritual standpoint and getting and breaking the curses off our children, off our family line, repenting for the sins of our fathers, so you know, so they have less to deal with. I remember a conversation with a former sister. You know, she was talking about if our children don't go out in the world, how are they going to have a testimony? And I, and I told her, I said, sister, there's plenty to repent for. There's always something to do as far, far, as, our, far as our people go, you know, something to get clean from. And so these children, I mean, there's, there's going to be things they're going to have to still deal with. Now, hallelujah, that we know that we have this knowledge that we can break these curses, get the deliverance, cast these devils out. But like I said, it's still the mountains. We still got to climb up the mountains. And when the most high folks dealing with them, they, they may they may go to a deeper depth that we didn't even even touch, that we don't even know even aware of. Now maybe we will be, but whatever. Some of, but you know, some of us even ignore that. What what is available to us, things you should be dealing with. And yeah, brother Welly, we do have to be better examples than our parents were to us. So we can't cry with spilled milk. We got to keep. We just got to keep on rolling. Keep chugging along. No, but that heritage, man, we know we gotta you know, we gotta do everything that we can do that, that that's available to us. Operate go in the knowledge that we have. And getting clean from the things that we know we need to be cleansed from. So that way they don't have to come back, dang, you know, if they, you know, dad dad knew about this, why did he do nothing about himself? Well, son, now that you have that knowledge, you go. You do. You know, so don't make no excuses. Either way, there'll be no excuses made. 
You know, so they can't justify themselves. Say, well, my wicked daddy, my wicked mom. No. Well, hey, you deal with the wicked. Let's see how righteous you want to be. You know, it's no excuse for anybody. But, but, I, but, we, but we do need to need to strive, saints. I'll just say that. We need to strive for the righteousness and the holiness, to strive to be as righteous and holy as we can. You know, because we want to be like Jesus when he comes. We don't want to. And all the sins and iniquities that we know we got, let's just repent of. Let's get clean. Let's get that stuff under the blood. Get these devils cast out of. Hallelujah. So, so, I, so the next generation, they, they don't have to do this. We won't leave the things undone that we could have gotten done. They, they, they got much to plow through. So let's not get slack. You know, that message Pastor did, did uh, what, about two weeks ago, about not slacking on deliverance. Hallelujah. So, and even that, let's let's keep, let's just keep plowing things. Let's consider the, the, the seed coming behind us. Hallelujah. Oh, one thing I want to say too, before I forget, I made myself a little note. Well, you, all you righteous sisters, you know, wearing your head covers, I'm sure you might get tempted by the devil. You might even make you think, why, why, why do I need to wear this? I'm gonna tell you, these these heathens out here, all, out there, all watching you. We're watching you sisters especially. Now, us men, we fit in. We, you know, pretty much, you know, nobody really notices us. But they notice you. you know, I had a woman, a woman at work say something to me the other day. She asked me, why, why, why do your sisters, why do your sisters wear head cuffs? You know, I started explaining it to her. And she, you know, she's a Christian woman, you know, a heathen Christian woman. But she, but she's thinking about uh, starting to wear a head cuff. That's I, that's explaining what the scriptures say. Oh, you know, she's like, man, honey, you know, she just. It got her attention. She get, you know, she saw, um, I forgot what sisters it was this time. Uh, what's her name? Sister Marcella and her daughter. I think it was Sister Mar Brother Mike's wife from Texas. Yeah, brother, yeah, Sister Marcella and her daughters. You know, she saw them. You know, it's amazing how that how that conviction works. She said, you no, know, she didn't. She didn't ignore it because she can't. Cause she she saw me when I was walking by and she stopped me and, and talked to me about it. So I'm glad that these sisters keep doing that. Keep keep keeping yourselves whole as you're out there amongst the heat. I'm out there in the world being that light. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am, sister, sister Amara, bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, let me go back. Hold on. Let me... In verse 22, Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there's no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let's also walk in the spirit. So let, let's let, let's uh, lock that in, saints. Make sure, make sure you're examining yourself, checking yourself. Hallelujah. I mean, it's not brother, uh, it's not brother Ugly's fault. If I got if I got envy, envy, and uh, adultery and fornication and uncleanness working in my heart. You know, that, that ain't got nothing to do with Brother Ugly. That's my that, that's my problem. Or you either, Brother Brother Willie. I, I got to deal with me. If I can't clean my clean clean your flesh, clean your spirit. I got to deal with mine. I have to cleanse myself from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. <laughs> yeah, Brother Ugly, <laughs> hold it because they don't eat meat, right? <laughs> that's a whole nother that's a whole nother thing in itself, right there too. Mm. You be holy, but you're weak. Hallelujah. Anyway. I want to um tell you what, let's go to let's go to Psalms chapter fifteen. Psalms fifteen, brother ugly. Let me get there. Hallelujah. So we're going to start at verse 1. We'll just read the whole thing. The 
Psalm of David. It says, Lord, who shall dwell in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? This is David asking the question, right? Let's see, let's see what's the uh, answer back. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, and whose eyes the vile person is condemned, but he that honoreth them, but he that honoreth them that fear, fear the Lord, Yahweh, he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. So these are the conditions for being, David was asked, well, how, you know, hey, how am I going to dwell in your holy hill? How am I going to be in the king to be in your presence? And this is what he got, this is the answer he got. But verse 3, you know, this, this especially the first part, you know, he that backbites not with his tongue. You know how this tongue, the tongue's a two-edged sword. You know, you can do good with it, or you can do evil with it, or, you know, much evil with it, much good. But that that, that is a, a weapon that has that is killed a lot of people. Probably it, that tongue has killed more, more, more souls, has taken more souls than, than a gun or a knife has, will ever do, than a nuclear bomb will ever do. That's probably that's the most deadly instrument ever made. Now, of course, that ain't going to your tongue. That wouldn't be your tongue, would it be? Hold on, let me go back to my chat. That wouldn't be your tongue, would it, Brother Vincent? You know, you, you, you never heard, you, you've never heard anyone with your tongue, have you, bro? Or Alexis Tatum, 90. How about you, Brother Ugly? You ever, have you slain any souls with your tongue? Sister Brittany, and, and, and you folks who who who, who gonna be listening to this at some other point in time later when you download, listen to it, or whatever on YouTube, whatever. How many people have you killed with your tongue? And the next question is, have you ever have you repented up? Get that blood off your hands. You know, <laughs> That tongue something else. But let's go to let's go to James. You know how before, before I go, nah, we'll go there. We'll go there. Let's go to James. Chapter three. Sorry. James chapter three. Then so we'll start. But like we'll start with we'll, we'll go to um from verses one to twelve one through twelve. Be here for for a little bit. Hope you think you're doing all right. Hallelujah. Hope you're encouraged. Enjoy the nice day today. A little bit of rain that we got. Well, no more than a little bit, but you know, we need it because it's been dry here in Tennessee. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and is able also to bridle the whole body. Is anybody offended in word lately? That's the question. If none of you haven't, you're a perfect man. But James goes on to say this, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. You know, you got control over. Behold, also the ships, though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet, yet are they turned about with a very small helm. Whithersoever the governor lifts, you know, where the person driving the boat desires. The direction, you gave us control. But even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. 
and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Let's stop there for a minute. You know, that tongue, you know, it's small in our, in our, in our body. But, you know, with that mouth, you know, we can start some stuff, can't we? You know, how, how great a matter a little fire kindler. You know, you take one well, one situation. Let, let, let's say, uh, let's say, uh, Sister Brittany said something about Sister Amara, Amara's hair. You know, it, it, it don't like Donkey Kong from there and there. Especially when women get going. Y'all know what I'm talking about, sisters. Because y'all can start some crap with y'all might. Attitudes and spirits y'all can stir up, put off. That deadly poison, you can you can spew that venom. Like a coke. You know how they do it, but you know, a coke was spitting that venom out. Talking to one person, you know, you can talk to your buddy. Hey, sister, she said this. Blah, blah, blah. You know, just going off, going off, going off. This, you know, because it says full of deadly poison. Man, it, it won't stop. You know, you, you know how they... Um, take snakes and stuff and they milk them, right? You, you had that little, they had a snake by his head and they put his mouth on the glass jar thing. I've seen some videos. They even do it with spiders too. Put them there and, you know, they, they squeeze them or something to get, you know, getting them, getting all, draining all the venom out of them. You know, but this one's full of, full of pork. I don't know. Some, some of these, sometimes we got, got rolling today. I don't even get all the venom out. We have to cut that damn tongue out. And burn with fire. Make sure it can't do, uh, can't grow back and can't do no more pork. You know, cause, cause, you know, because some people are an evil host to these devils that help motivate them to spew out this pork using the tongue. You know, committing sin with our tongue. You know, our men got it bad too, sisters. Don't, 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 don't get me wrong. Now, I'm just don't throw women out there first. You know, because you look at the first conversation that led to sin. Who the serpent go to? We will go there tonight, y'all. But who did the serpent go to? Went to the woman, right? Started with her. And that mouth run. Now, now the husband of the rose up told her to shut up and get away from that serpent. It would have been, been good. But Adam didn't do that. So, But that tongue, that mouth get to rolling, showing that heart. What, what's it, showing what's in it for real. What's manifest. If you go back and look at Galatians chapter 5. The, the uh We'll see, we'll see what's working in. But let, let's see what Jesus said. Of course, Jeremiah said, the heart is the evil and death of the wicked. No man can know. None of y'all know your heart. But we can tell what's in it by what you say. By what you manifest. You know, as far as the words that you speak. And the ones that you don't speak, too. You know, because a lot, a, lot, a lot of people have very loud spirits. You know, like some of you said, so you can be yeah, y'all, you, you put on that meek spirit, right? You, you put it on that you meek. Like Pastor said, that quiet ride be going on though. You can see you loud and hear you loud and clear. You, let's <laughs> see here, here on the land, you in the back forty. I can, I can hear your spirit, spirit at the front gate. I'm like, damn, I, I wish you'd shut up. <laughs> like, man, that spirit is loud. Broadcast, you know, the different things that you broadcast. Broadcast. Some of you broadcast your whores, your whoremongers. You broadcast your fears, your doubts, your unbelief, your offenses. You know, just picking up on the radar, you know, and, and the ships, right, they had that radar thing, and they go bloop. Brother Willie, you know what I'm talking about, them blips on the radar. Some people blip, don't never go back. You know, every time you, your radar go around, that thing go around, it's always showing. Some of them getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> and, you're, and you're five miles away from you still see them just, just as clear as day. But we need to get we need to get rule over that. We need to get control over that. But no man can change the tongue. So we're gonna to have to yield our members, yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But let's look at what Jesus said. Hold on a sec. I just go to Matthew chapter fifteen. Matthew chapter fifteen. Starting at verse let me see, brother ugly. Oh, let me look at it. Matthew chapter 15. Let's start verse verse 8. Verse 10. 
That's what Jesus was talking. He was talking to the disciples. Of course, he had a conversation with the scribes and the Pharisees, you know, about washing hands and all of that, and the, and the commandments of men. But anyway, y'all go back. Everything we covered. Thank you. You should all know by now. Go back and read it in context. Hallelujah. I don't want to be here all night reading all that. You do your due diligence. Hallelujah. All right, Matthew 15, 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard thy saying? But he answered, said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And Peter answered and said unto him, Declare unto us this, par declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are you also yet without understanding? You mean, man, you don't understand this? Do you not yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goes into the belt and is cast out into the drop? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. While the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, death, false witness, blasphemy. These things, these are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands, defile the man not. You know, so the things you speak, that's what's going to defile a man. So when you so when you talk with somebody, with you putting your wicked lips in their ears, spewing out your negativity, your doubt, your fear, you know, your envy towards them or towards somebody else. When you Throwing that at them with your mouth, that weapon, that, that weaponized tongue, you're defiling the person. Just like, you know, our people defiled the land, you know, didn't let, let the land rest, and, and, of course, committing all their whoredoms and idolatry and everything else against the Most High, and, of course, he had to kill, he had to put us out. It was the same thing. This just was doing spiritually to a person, you know, when you got that ear, you know, in fact, use an example of sending the elder Rufus. You can send the elder Rufus to go minister to the saints because he can, he can trust the elder Rufus not to preach some strange doctrine to the people. And he can trust the elder Rufus to come back and give him a righteous report of the, of the, of the, of the people that, they, um, that he sends them to. Hallelujah. So thank you all for a righteous, faithful help. Hallelujah. As you look at that tongue, let's go back to James. Let's go back. You know, and the tongue is a fire, verse 6. A world of iniquity. So is the tongue our members. So is the tongue among our members. That it defiles the whole body and set us on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. So for every kind, every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith, bless we God, Yah, even the Father. And therewith, curse we men, which are made after the similitude of Yah. Out of the mouth, out of the same mouth, proceeds, proceeds blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both, both yield salt? So can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh? Which fountain are you, brothers and sisters? Are you blessing y'all and cursing man? You know, you got good water today, bad water tomorrow. You know, you got you, you, you got you got salt water today, and tomorrow you won't be fresh water there by drink out of it. You know, you depending on what spirit you're in. Are you too spirited? 
You don't know which way, you know, you, you decide to be a righteous, Holy Ghost filled saint today, but tomorrow you're going to be full of hell. You know, an unstable soul. Or you just got a foul nature you refuse to deal with. Now you look at this. You know, saints, you look at like husbands and wives, right? You know, wife getting a bad spirit, right? The first, you know, you first get married, you know, wife, wife you know, your husband, husband and the child getting along good or whatever. Let's say wife, wife goes over to mother-in-law's house for the day, comes back home, and she's as cold as ice. He's like, what the heck, huh? What's wrong with you? You know, then practicing black bedroom blackmail on the man. You know, before before that, she was, you know, she she was doing her wifely duties in the, in, the, in that regard. She's doing everything she's supposed to do. Go go get tainted because uh, mama don't like the hug. You know, for whatever reason, she got an offense towards him, hates him, whatever. Or the, she had the appearance that she liked she liked the brother. Or or she could could like the brother, but somehow somewhere in between. When that wife went over there and came back home, something happened. Did, 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 did mother, was mother's tongue full of some of deadly poison? Or was the wife's heart full of some deadly poison? She went over to mother's house and manifested, then came back home being a, just being a devil, being a cold witch towards her husband. Or the man, he hadn't, you know, he hadn't jacked up just for whatever reason. You know, so we husbands with a with a with a body of Christ too. Now the word says, you know, you know, a, a foolish woman plucks down a house, but you know, we're, we're, if we're the bride of Christ as well, are we gonna pluck down a house with our hands too? Should we not be teaching the wife how to build the house? When wise woman builds the house, but the foolish woman plucks it down with her hands. Do, do we what, do we at times manifest that nature when we're plucking down the house instead of building up, training up our training our wives? And our children, how to how, how to be teaching them, guiding them, throwing a good seed in them, so the house is built up. You know, the wife knows what she's supposed to do. She knows her role and can fulfill it. The children know their role and fulfilling it. But but if you if you the head is sick, you gonna make the whole body sick. So sometimes sometimes you wonder why your wife don't act right. Well, brother, well you don't got far to look. She messed up because you messed up. You get yourself right. Stop complaining about her. Stop murmuring about her. Do your role. You be the bride of Christ. And who knows? Maybe that wife will fall. Now, if she don't, get rid of her. Get you another shot. But first, you do that. You you do right. Especially when you haven't been. You know, playing the hypocrite. Come before everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, you know. And then, well, my wife, man. No, nah, bro. Uh-uh. You straighten up. Do your part first. You be a righteous husband. And you women, your husband ain't doing right, whatever. You you gain him by your chase conversation. Stop going out here bitching. Raising all this damn sand in hell everywhere. Or, or acting like your wicked emotions, going <laughs> crying every damn way to everybody. Why don't you just get yourself right and do what you're supposed to do? Tell you what, you want to do so much bitching about your husband, go go, go talk to Mama Nell. I guarantee you she'll blast your ass. Did you use Mama Nelly as an as a, as a, as a, as a example there? Because we know Mama Nelly a hammer. Or well, she will be what she needs to be to. She ain't going to play with. It. Hallelujah. But anyway, let's continue. So let's make sure we're not. Let's make sure we're not a, a fountain that's bringing salt water one day and Bitter water, uh, sweet, you know, being sweet water one day and bitter water the next. All right, hallelujah. Let, let's strive for some holiness. Let's get our character. Let's be reformed and transformed in our character, our nature. And yeah, you're right, Brother Willie. It starts with the man. Hallelujah. The man, the head of the household. But the head should lead the way. But that body's biting and devouring itself. Well, or house divided against itself when it ain't going to stand. Hallelujah. But, you know, we look at the tongue. You just think about this. You know, you talk about the tongue and everything. But what, what's the purpose of the mouth on the body? It's supposed to take in food, right? We eat with it. 
the two main purposes are to eat with it and to speak with it. So vice versa, you know, it's useful eating and communicating, right? You know, you look at babies, all they do is put everything in their mouth. If they, if they develop their motor skills, they can reach and grab. They take everything and put it in their mouth. And some of us are spiritual babies. We put spiritual babies. We put. We've, just, we've taken a lot of bad things to put in our mouth, and that stuff has a uh, has a uh, has come to fruition. And then you're spewing out bad things. You know, brother ugly always over here cussing out. Cussing out all these people on the street corner, tell them, tell them you black devil. What did what, 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 what you receive in you? Did you receive that spirit from them, 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 from them black devil speaking, telling you a white devil? Did you receive that spirit in and all of a sudden you, and now you're spewing out the same mess? So Brother Vincent, I mean, so, so one, one day you at peace with your wife, and the next day you beating the hell out of her. What's going on? What, what, what's, what, what, what's been received? What's been taken in? There's something to think about. So you got to be careful what you hear and what you receive. So you're receiving the good word of y'all, especially at this ministry, at the man of y'all ministers from, preaches to us from, and you're taking in that word, and you're reading the word, getting the word in you. You should be able to manifest the, the nature of Christ, Right? So what, what, does it, what does it say over here? Hold on. Where did that paper go? I wrote something. I wrote myself a little note. Where did I put? Yeah. Tell you what. Yeah, brother, that's a nasty spirit. Let's go to Second Corinthians. Um, Second Corinthians, chapter five. I'm gonna read verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, we got this, some of our old nasty ways rising up in us. Well, what's going on? Now, we, we should be a, a new man, a new creature. Behold, let's go to, um, let's read, let's go to Matthew. 19, verse 28. This is something the king said, the real Jesus said. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now that key word in that scripture is re in the regeneration. You know, we're, we're, we were made new. We're, we're a new creature. Right? And all things have become new. So this old that we did, this old that rises up, especially what we manifest through our tongue, you know, you look at, you know, you look at, you know, murmuring, complaining, backbiting, gossiping, tailbearing. You know, so many sins of the, sins of the tongue that we commit. Sins of the mouth. That we manifest through our mouth, through our tongue. Going back to James, manifesting that world of iniquity. You know, that fire, that seven course of hell. Hey, you know we didn't get a, we didn't get a hold of that. You know we didn't allow the Holy Spirit to govern us. Let Him help us with the uh, with our mouth. If we manifest a lot of our that we speak a lot of our doubts, our unbelief. Yeah, we you know even curse ourselves with some of the things we say or curse others, like right? even James said. You know, we bless y'all and curse man, whether we do it intentionally or unintentionally. But we need to we need to get a hold of the tongue, hold of our mouth. You know, let's read this. This is over in, over in Job two, chapter two, verse ten. This is what it says about Job. Job, you know, he's going through his whole trial, his affliction. No, he did. You know, he did. He, he did better than most of us would do, but he's a good example. We, we, we can learn from. It says this conversation with his wife now, but he said unto her, "Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. 
What shall we shall we receive good at the hand of Yah, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. You know, it says this. Job also said this. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. We can learn from Job, saints. Hallelujah. Speak any wickedness. Let's not utter any deceit. But you know, but Job didn't, you know, he didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't sin with his lips. So let's make sure we, we need to, uh, strive to not be sinning with our lips. You know, of course, that was for Joe, you know, not us, right, you know. So, so me and Brother Ugly don't have to, you know, we, we can't sin with our lips, but, you know, Sister Mara, you know, Brother Willie, you know, y'all just keep on. And everybody else out there that's listening, y'all, you know, yeah, y'all keep on sinning with your lips. We'll, we'll hold it down. And some of these conversations, yeah, we do need to step away from when people are speaking things that aren't right. You know, let's order our conversation all right so we can, um, you know, speak wholesome words. You know, speak words of life, things that edify. Hallelujah. I want to read this, this one. Hold on. Okay, right, let's, let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 19. Something for something. Something for us to think about here. Luke chapter 19. We're going to start at verse. Let me me get there. Luke. Now, this is the servant. This is the the parable of the servant with the servants with the talents. Okay, we'll start at verse, uh, verse 20. And another came saying, Master, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I fear thee, because thou art and art still a man. Thou takest up, that thou layest not down, and reapest, that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee. Thou wicked servant, thou knewest that I was a steward man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest thou not my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with users. You could have made money off this. And he said unto him that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that has ten pounds. And they said unto him, Master, he has ten pounds. Ain't that something? Well, he got something to say. <coughs> got, got to instruct the master. Ain't that, ain't that, isn't that us, Israel? We got, we, got, we got to put our mouth in the air. He don't need to be. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given, and for him that hath not, even that he hath, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, which will not have, which not, <laughs> excuse me, saints, but those mine enemies, which were not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. I'm going to get back to, back to what he said. That's in verse 22. He says, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee. And let's not forget, saints. You know, first of all, let's not forget, we, we need to have a healthy fear of the most high. You know, the fear of y'all is the beginning of wisdom. And there's a... There's a and I perceive there's a great lack of the fear of Yah operating amongst us. And we need to have to, we need to we need to stop to get the fear of the Most High in us, especially with the way with the way we speak at times. But you know what? One thing too, not so much the outward speaking that we do, but that inward speaking that we do. You know, there's a lot that's going on on the inside. You know. If it comes out once we we will speak pretty much speak what we got going on, but you know there's a lot of things you hear on the inside that that, that you speak out, you know that that, that a lot of that discontentment, you know that's within or that fear that's within, envy that's within. You gonna let the, you let that 
minister on the inside of you, and then you speak it out in one in one fashion or another, or, or you know, or or, or or you just speak it out not so much with your words, but you manifest it with your nature. Your character gets infected by. It. But we need to see what's what's ministering to you on the inside, though. Who is that? What is that? Take them thoughts captive. Examine that. When you'll find the devil operating it, then you know what to do. You know, like Pastor always tells us, you, you, we think a lot of these thoughts that we have are, you know, that, you know, that we're generating. With the author of a lot of that's, that's speaking in you, that's coming from the things you hear in your mind. But I know there ain't no devils, you know, we don't have we don't need no deliverance, you know. So, but anyway, hallelujah. But he said, All your own mouth will I judge you. That's our wicked service. Just don't forget, Jesus did say we have to give account for every idle word that we speak. But out of their own mouth, you know, the servant knew what he was supposed to do. And he didn't do it. So the master judged him. Hey, look, man, you know what you should have done? This, I didn't get, he, he didn't give you I didn't give you too much for you to handle. I know what you could do. You could at least done that. Put it in the bank. Come on. But he took that away from him. He took that he took that service talent away from him and gave it to the one that was actually producing something. Making his master money, made his master happy. The one that had made five, that turned his five talents into ten. Hallelujah! Hey, what thanks is with past the top of an hour, top of the hour. Let's take a ministry break. But thanks can send their support. Hold on one second, let me get there. Shalom, this is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying the live stream that you're listening to right now. We appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth Ministry. We try to make sure we do our due diligence and do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you would like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is Straightway Truth Ministry, 632 Highway 52, Bypass West, Number 7, Lafayette, Tennessee, 37083. Lafayette is spelled L A. F-A-Y-E-T-T-E. Again, our mailing address is Straightway Truth Ministry, 632 Highway 52, Bypass West, Number 7, Lafayette, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to send a personal note to Pastor Charles Dowell, just add the letters C forward slash O in front of the word straightway and your letter will go directly to him. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. You may leave a message there and be the Father's will, we will do everything we can to return your message. And if you would like to know more about our healing, deliverance and truth ministry, keep up to date on events, or find a home fellowship closest to you, please visit our website at straightway.com. Straightway is spelled S-T-R-A-I-T-W-A-Y dot com. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. Please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ just like we all are. Shalom. The King is coming. 
Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. Thanks, all right. We are back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So let's go to First Peter chapter three. Let's read verse ten. So let's start at verse eight there. Let's start at verse eight. Finally, be all of one mind. Having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that you are thereunto called that you should inherit a blessing. So you look at that, not rendering evil for evil, railing for railing, you know, of course, you know, that's done with the mouth, right? Sometimes it's hard, though. Somebody make you mad, you want to go off on them, blast them, cuss them out, do all these things that you want to not. You're speaking, you know, out of the wrong spirit. But Paul says this, you know, but, you know Peter said that, but contrary to our blessing, what? Change your nature, huh? Stop with all that old man just wanting to, you know, go, go the other way. Let's go this way. You know, tame that. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain, let him refrain his tongue from evil, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no God. Let him eschew evil and do good, let him seek peace and ensue it. You know, for the eyes of Yahweh over the, the eyes of the Lord over the righteous and his ears open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if you be false to that which is good? But that, that shows some character change, just some, some control. You can let you, you know, refrain your tongue from evil, and your lips they speak no God, you know, deceive. Hmm. You got to be converted to be able to do that, though, don't you? Which is a good thing. You know, what Jesus says, except you be born again, you should not see the kingdom of y'all. But you must be born again. You know, be that new creature. Letting the nature of Christ manifest in you. And show from you. Hallelujah. So no, no evil speaking. So it says this over in Proverbs ten nineteen. In the multitude of words, it wanteth not sin, but he that reframeth his lips is wise. So you want to be wise? At least in the one sense, keep your mouth shut. Especially if you're going to uh, keep from sinning. That's, that's some wisdom in itself. Keep yourself from sin. All right, let's go to um, Luke chapter 6. Six um, yeah, hold on. Let's go to Luke chapter 6. See something the king said again. Okay, all right, let's read from... Uh, Yeah, Luke chapter 6, let's go up to verse 43. 43, 43 through um, 45, brother. It says this, For a good tree bringeth forth not corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his fruit. For thorns may do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather their grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Speaketh. So 
So you so you'll be a good tree. Don't bring forth good um, corrupt fruit. But if you're but if you're a corrupt tree, you're gonna bring forth corrupt fruit. You know what is the cup corrupt fruit? It comes out. So what's we talking about the tongue? Talking about the mouth. You know. So what 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 what's the corrupt fruit? We're gonna bring forth some slander, some gossip, you know, some hatred. You name it, we can bring it up. You know, all the things of the evil. Let's bring forth the fruit of the spirit from our from 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 our tree. Speak the good thing. Let's refrain our tongues from evil. Let's refrain from murmuring. But what what destroys our people in the wilderness? Let's think on that for a second. You know, when they when they were loaves in the, the the light bread, the manna. You know, they they they, manna, they they first they started on the inside, then they started speaking. Yeah, let's, go to, let's go to Exodus chapter 16. Let's go ahead and read. Let's go ahead and read that. So Exodus 16. Verses, uh, we'll read one through three. And they took their journey from Elam. And all the congregation of the church of Israel came unto the wilderness of Seir. Which is which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured. You know, they're using that mouth now, that world of iniquity, that little member, that little member, bringing forth some corrupt fruit now, right? And the and the congregation of the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pot, and when we did eat bread to the full, for he had brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunk. You know, they murmured because they hung. You know, why not just ask for food? Instead of doing all this complaining, you know, somebody says, Hey, Moses, um, you know, we're getting hungry. You know, I know we got this, uh, Man, but you know, why would you, could you ask for more time for something else? <laughs> you know, they could have done that for just complaining and, and, and making the most time. You know what Pastor said in one of his messages? He says, Hey, you better buy some peaches. Don't just buy beans. I'm going to tell you now, you're going to get the, the, the human spirits are going, to, are going to eat those beans for so so long before, before they get, you know, get upset about it, before you throw them beans at somebody. Or, you know, you, or you're going to want to eat something else and not eat your beans. The same thing they do. They show here, you know. They say, okay, I can only, I only handle so much of this bread. I'm done with it. You know, they got, you know, their, their murmur. You know, now that word with Nicholas working, that fire, killing the fire. One person might have said it. Somebody was thinking it, then somebody said it, and then boom, you know, like a fire, it took off. And then, y'all said this in verse four. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I'm gonna rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out. And gather a certain rate every day that I might pro- may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Now you to test this. See if they're going to obey them or not. Okay, let's skip down here. And in verse 7, and in the morning they shall see, and you shall see the glory of Yahweh, for he hears their murmurs against. Lost my place. Okay, yeah, verse 7. And in the morning you shall see the glory of, of Yahweh, for he heareth your murmurs against the Lord. And what are we that you murmur against us? So you can, they said, What are we? You murmur against us, but it's really against him. And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, in the morning bread to the full, for that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which you murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. See all this murmur is going on? Okay, let's get now. Y'all, y'all read the rest of it. Hold on, let me find it. Uh, okay, I lost my spot. 
Oh, that was it. Okay, yeah, I just want to read that part. Okay. But they, when you see they murmured, then the father had to send them bread. You know, he sent he sent them flesh to eat. You know, the, the quail. And of course, what happened? While the flesh was between their teeth, you know, they died. They killed. And so you see what that discontent spirit manifested speaking out of you brought forth, brought forth that death. I think if they had more more of the fear of Yah, they would not have uh, murmured. But how, how many of us today have a murmuring spirit within us that we that we hide? You know, that we insulate, that we protect, you know, love that depth. Instead of dealing with it, repenting, getting the deliverance you need, you want to Keep satisfying that devil just by, by letting him murmur through it. You know, hey, look, Brother Vince, you know, I'm tired of it. Somebody coming straight away, man, that, that we have fried chicken. I want to I wanna have um some uh, some of Brother Daniel's um, tomahawk steaks for the next six months for dinner. Well, man, no, nah, bro, I'll tell you what, Brother, brother I, you know, Brother Carla, I want to eat, um, I want to eat, um, Vegetable soup every day. You know, I'm a vegan. Better get out of here. I want to eat uh eat, eat some fried duck or some uh or um <laughs> trying to think of something. <laughs> I, want, I want French toast for breakfast every day. You know, I hate eggs. Oh yeah, but I like wild goose steaks. Yeah, there we go. See, all all all, all this stuff we we got going on. Right, you go murmur in somebody's ear just to what? Just just to uh, just to cause a cancer to work in the box. Have an ungrateful spirit, ungrateful heart. Yeah, that's right, brother. Ain't nothing changed. So we need to be a thankful people, right? Be thankful, no matter what. And that's what the Most High can be pleased with. But you know, but, but that's some of the things our forefathers have done. You know, our ancient people they. They send in that way. So let, let's uh let's um let's let's guard our tongue. Let's let's get the poison. Let's not let's not be poisonous. Let's not be a viper in any way. Showing for the the viper nature, you know, Pastor talked about that. A lot of ways. What Jesus say, all you generations of vipers, how can you be in the evil speak good things? Father, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know. So, he, so he's that he's having having to having to rebuke people for their mouth. Hallelujah. And what Psalm thirty four says this, thirty four thirteen says this. Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy, leap, and thy lips from speaking God. Hallelujah. But thanks. I would say this. No, no I'll tell you what. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. You know, this is something David said over in Psalm, Psalm 17, verse 3. Thou hast proved my heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am purposed. You know, that's David now. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Where is our purpose at? With our mouth, do we, do we uh, purpose that we're not going to transgress with our mouth? You know, do we strive to strive to uh, keep our our mouth in check so they ain't walking through the whole earth? You know, blaspheming heaven and blaspheming, you know, blaspheming y'all, blaspheming man. You know, you know so some mouths are just on the attack. You know, don't want to be at peace with nobody. Can't speak peaceably to to any soul. You out there thirsty one day, somebody trying to bring you some water. Man, get out of my face. 
dang, man, I'm just trying to help you out, bro. You like you thought? I shut your face. Get out of my, leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. I hate you. You know, some people are forward like that. Can't do good to this. Look, I'm just sitting there if you want to drink it. If not, leave it. <laughs> you know what I mean? How, how, you know, how, how you deal with people like that? The one that man that um that um David got um his wife from Abigail. You know, he, was he wasn't he a churlish man that nobody could speak to? Him? You know, he's so hard, so obstinate, just like his name. Just that damn wicked and vile. So, you know, unapproachable. Do we want to be like that? Do we want to be spiritual porcupines that no one can even get close to us? You know, that we can't, you know, offer no uh, you know, have a peaceful spirit with our brothers and our sisters. They can't even just sit down and say, hey, man, I just want to say thank you, you know, or I love you. Or just give you a hug. You know, just be there with you. But you, your heart is yet hard, so hardened, you know, you can't receive a, a brother. And don't forget what Pastor said yesterday. You've done unto the least of these, my brethren. You've done it unto me. You know, that brother you despise, that sister you can't stand. I don't care if it's a heat. I mean, dang, you, you want to despise people? Just because? They have something evil towards somebody just because? But check your heart. Let, let, let's, let's strive for the righteousness of y'all, saints. Let's strive for the to be to the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. You can't go wrong with that. There ain't no sin in that. Hallelujah. David said this, Psalms 14, verse 13. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. That's a good thing to say. That's a good thing to say. You know, because David, you know, I say he he recognized the the power of the, of the word the word what, the, what your words do the power of the tongue. Hey, you know, let's think about this thing. Uh, the Most High He made everything with His words. You know what was the beginning was the work. You know and that and that, and, and that with that beginning he, he created everything He spoke and it was so. Hey, let there be light. Let the dry land appear. You know stars in the front. You know. And everything he made, let the animals come forth, you know, and all that, you know. So, if, how, how powerful the word is, and of course, we see how powerful the word is when we're doing deliverance, when we're speaking the word and healing, and and that, that likely manifests the power of to the word. But more importantly, the words that we that that should make us have so much have, have some fear and some reverence, you know, the words that come out of our mouth. You know, we should have some fear and some reverence. Because don't forget, greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. We have the we have the Messiah in us. We've been born again. We have that, that inner man within us is not us no more. That's Christ in us. And we need to become obedient sons, doing the things that please the Father. And I think he wants our words to be pleasing to him as well. Hallelujah. Especially to one another. Hallelujah. All right, thanks. I think I'm going to stop there. I have quite a few other scriptures I could read, but I think I'm going to stop there. But I will say this. You know, like Pastor, close the service. With what David said. You know, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, y'all. My strength and my redeemer. Thank you all for being here tonight, Saints. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you all. Love you all. Bless all you saints on the community. Spread out, doing the work, getting the work done. Brother Daniel, Elder Mitch, Elder Rufus, Brother Chris, all y'all, Brother Will, all y'all saints getting it done. Hallelujah. Appreciate you all. All of you are here tonight too. And the thanks those of you who are in the community. Your 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 efforts and everything that you do are appreciated as well too. So don't don't uh 
feel left out in any way. Hallelujah. But brothers and sisters, let's strive. Let's, let's continue to strive for holiness and righteousness with the Most High. Walk in His holiness and in His fear. Hallelujah. All right, saints. Bless you all. Love you all, family. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Uh-oh, look at him looking. Blog Talk Radio.